I'm Haim Gray, a local botanist and founder and curator of Whakamana, New Zealand's only cannabis museum. Come on in. Kia ora, I'm here with Haim Gray, director of the Whakamana Cannabis Museum and star of Drug Lord Series 1, in which we filmed the Undy 500 riots here in Dittany even 10 years ago. Students got horribly drunk and attacked the police with bottles and all sorts of other weapons. Hey, what's happened in the last 10 years? It's been a decade of vindication for us. Everything we said about comparing the harms of cannabis and alcohol has proven to be correct. Uh, and yeah, that scene we filmed 10 years ago has just been worn out in wider society. The harms have been alcohol. Uh, the harms of alcohol have been repeatedly shown over and over. The mainstream acceptance of cannabis is advancing as we see successes overseas and we move towards legalization here in New Zealand. And that's allowed us to create the wonderful Whakamana Cannabis Museum as an attraction for tourists and other interested people on the high street in central Dania. Fantastic. Let's take a look. Any society which tolerates alcoholic consumption at the level at which we do, but inveighs against cannabis and then prosecutes and punishes against cannabis, has an extraordinary amount of self-deception about it. The university has traditionally relied on the student drinking culture as a marketing tool to attract students, to make it seem like a party atmosphere that people would want to come to. But it's a double-edged sword because when the students drink too much, uh, shit gets out of control, they start burning couches and even riots. They've had to back away from that image recently, but for many decades it was a significant part of the university's image, and they were not ashamed of it, and they traded on that. There is a very strong vested interest in alcohol in Dunedin. You've got this um, strong alcohol culture, but it's supported very much by local politicians in Dunedin. The alcohol industry in Dunedin is very much part of the establishment, and despite the harms that it causes, it is seen as a legitimate industry. Definitely alcohol sponsorship was huge. The local beer company Spates would be seen on all the posters for orientation, you know, even up in the lecture halls back in the early days. The biggest drug problem in New Zealand is alcohol. Alcohol is the number one drug problem in the country. It's not methamphetamine and it's not cannabis. If we were to discover cannabis and alcohol simultaneously today, there'd be a lot more concern about alcohol than cannabis. People are ignorant of the damage that alcohol does because they, they, there's so much of it, you become numbed to it. And then people have focused their concerns on cannabis. During weekends, up to 70% of injury-based emergency department presentations are alcohol-related. Alcohol is implicated in 30% of all police recorded offences, 34% of all recorded family violence, and half of all recorded homicides. The drug that does produce more belligerence, more violence, more health problems and financial problems, and more family and community problems than all other drugs combined is legal. So there's something wrong with that picture. This is Castle Street. This is ground zero of Dunedin's drinking culture. This is the place where students want to live so they can get drunk 24-7. At the height of the riots, there was multiple burned out cars. It looked like Baghdad. Broken glass everywhere, burnt trees, burnt power poles, burnt people. Trees were ripped up over here, couches being burned over here, some of them dangerously close to power poles and houses. So the Undy riots took place just one block down that way, while at the same time our cannabis smoking anniversary was just one block over that way. And the police had to devote significantly more resources to the alcohol incident. They didn't have to devote any resources towards our incident, but society makes them feel like they have to. We tried to educate them as much as we can, let them know we're peaceful cannabis smokers, draw attention to the fact that their time would be better spent doing other things. And they seemed to agree, and they left. Because, as we expected, 
there's a riot developing down the road. We've been relaxing, smoking weed, hanging out down at Sammy's. I was just heading home, but um, I saw, you know, a bit. I was trying to drive through one street. They said, no, you have to go the other way. Line of riot cops moved by. I'm kind of trapped in here. Like, uh, they won't let me get my car out any of the different ways, but it's, uh, it's what you would expect, you know. It's, uh, it's pretty prime juxtaposition, the cannabis versus alcohol this evening. You can see clearly comparing those two events side by side on the same night what is the effects of alcohol and the effects of cannabis. In Dunedin, the police openly tolerate mass irresponsible consumption of alcohol, and it costs the city millions. The only cost to society from our group smoking cannabis is the cost of the police running undercover operations against us. Dunedin police have been forced to defend their use of plainclothes officers to spy on marijuana smokings at Otago University. <laughs> It was a pretty significant operation that the police ran against the 420 group. They actually used officers from the Special Tactics Group, which is normally reserved for serious organized crime and gangs. And they were photographing uh, the 420s for at least five or six months. Oh, it would have cost quite a significant sum of money for all of that amount of staff for that amount of time to be just watching us waiting for something to happen with nothing ever happening. You know, in the end, they just tried to single me out and found me with two grams of weed. Well, I ended up getting discharged without conviction because the judge saw that the infinitesimal nature of my crime was totally outweighed by all the consequences that would come from me having a drugs conviction. So they let me off free after the police spent hundreds of hours surveilling us and trying to crack some organized crime gang that turned out to just be a bunch of university students making their political views known and having a session on Fridays. So New Zealand has the highest arrest and conviction rate for cannabis in the world. Those resources could go into, into other much, much more needed areas. How can the police spend so much time and money pursuing someone like me, who's a family man, works at the university, when there's crimes happening all around, all day, burglaries, drink drivers, murders, rapes. Reallocating those police resources to working on violent crime would result in reduction in social harms of about $300 million. Crime costs New Zealand about $10 billion a year. I mean, if just 10% of that amount was put into treatment and into rehabilitation programs, both in the community and in prison, we might actually reduce the amount of alcohol and drug-related crime going on in society, and we'd save the taxpayer an awful lot of money.